everybody, welcome to Simply Drawful. I'm Tay. With me I have Kay. Yo. Today, with the release of Final Fantasy XV, we decided, you know, let's make our own JRPG. For those not familiar with JRPGs, it's pretty much just a fancy way of saying it's a story-based driven game. And seeing as here at Simply Drawful, we like to draw pictures, create narratives, it really works out for us. So we have Kay first. Uh, she's going to draw our protagonist, and we'll go from there. First off, Kate, what can you tell us a little bit about your protagonist? She is going to be the spunky protagonist. Okay, how old is she? Probably uh, she's going to be uh, 14. All right, 14. So what's going on in this universe? Why does she need to go out on a mission? Let's see. Did somebody kill her parents? Well, I mean, I imagine she has a tragic backstory, which we'll get into. But there's got to be something going on that makes it so she needs to set out in the world. She's got to right or wrong. She's got to fix something in nature. You know, something happened to the planet that she's got to go investigate, which is going to, you know, snowball and put her on this journey of, you know, defeating aliens or whatever the case may be. Aliens sounds good. Aliens and a meteor. Uh, there, there have been a few JRPGs in the past that have used the meteor. Uh, yep. Uh, so, okay. So in our, our world, uh, well, what's her name? First off, Ooh. I know in most JRPGs, you eventually you name your own hero, but they always have a default name in case you can't think of your own. What's her default name? Ooh, that's a good one. Uh, we could w go with just some random syllables. Well, it's got to be something like medieval sounding, but also like kind of Japanese Ooh. sounding. Uh, what time period do we want her? Uh, like, is there any sort of technology so, or? So is this made like a steampunk fantasy? type world or just pure fantasy or futuristic apocalyptic. So these are the things we need to decide when creating our JRPG. I like the idea of futuristic apocalyptic. Okay. It's slightly futuristic or very futuristic, whatever, but it's not like Star Trek future where you go, everything's okay with some a few minor issues. It's, it's the future and everything is not okay. Yeah. Everything <laughs> is definitely not okay. Unless you are the rich people in charge. So we've decided she, in this apocalyptic future, uh, was out and about and witnessed a meteor crashing down. Yeah. So maybe stuff. the reason things are so bad behind the scenes, so no one knows why, um, and this will be the event that'll let her figure out why things are so bad so she can correct things and they can get to a good future. So maybe there are already aliens behind the scene kind of screwing things up, but no one really knows about them besides maybe like two or three people. And the meteor was recruits or or just replacements or something along those lines, you know, come to our planet of origin or something went wrong and they crashed land and that's what it looked like a meteor. So she witnesses that, goes to investigate and finds out about this plot. All right. She needs a weapon. She does so need a weapon. She is going to go up against a giant, uh, so aliens or uh, a massive well, uh, I'm, plot. I'm, I imagine eventually there is going to be some giant aliens. So she's got a, a big, definitely not a sword. What, is, what does she have there? Uh, I'm thinking it is some sort of uh, eating utensil. <laughs> okay. So is this girl, because we still haven't given her a name, is she like in a working in like a diner or a kitchen? Yeah, let's do that. That sounds like a great idea. Okay. So so she's a chef or just works in a kitchen. She works in her family restaurant. Okay. So she works in this family diner. I said her name's got to be something like uh, Celine or Sherrod. You know, something weird sounding. It's got to it's gotta sound like a, a real English name and then modified a little yeah, tiny bit. Yeah, exactly. Karis. I like Karis. So let's go with Karis. I imagine it's the starting scene. She's at the diner. Her parents had her go out and back to empty out the trash or something. She looks up, sees this meteor, and is just like, what is that? I must go investigate. Does she go alone or does she go, you know, pick up her somber friend? Yep. So she picks up her somber friend. They go investigate. And that's when we find out the plot of aliens. But of course, like all JRPGs, you think you know the story. Like right from the get-go, you're like, ah, aliens, of course. And then progress the game, get halfway through or three-fourths of the way through, and suddenly they just go, oh, aliens was just a red herring. This is the real issue. <laughs> That, mm. That's very common in JRPGs. Yes. So will we run into a similar issue? Uh, 
I think that the real bad guys are the humans all along. <laughs> we don't really necessarily need to figure out the big twist yet. I mean, that might come more organically as we unravel more of the story. All right. But we do know she works in a diner, mm -hmm. a family-run diner. And her family's going to die. Well, of course. Sees a meteor, goes and investigates with her friend, discovers aliens. Some sort of accident happens, ends up like obliterating the town or maybe just her diner. Yeah, yeah. Only the family diner. It was just really precise bad luck. <laughs> Yeah, very, very bad luck. So she goes, to the aliens, they blow it up. Is it a specific person slash alien that blew up the diner? And he did it on purpose because he knew it was going to hurt her. That That is going to get us into a discussion on uh, who our bad guy is. Does the bad guy actually know her? So I think she doesn't know the bad guy. Okay. She meets him on the ship. So maybe he's like kind of a robot cyborg and he has like a, a database on like every inhabitant on the planet and scans her and realizes how he can hurt her the most. So this bad guy really is just conniving and smart and doesn't pull his punches. Ooh, okay. Okay. I kind of like the idea of a cool, calculating, really smart, evil bad guy. Okay. So, I mean, to make you really appreciate it, though, it's part of the game, you actually take control of him. And, you know, Ooh, you're playing yeah. him, learning his backstory and how it all ties together. And his backstory is, like, even more depressing than her backstory. <laughs> Or I guess her current story, since you kind of just jump in right as her tragedy begins. That is true. And you're learning his horrible story and go, well, maybe he's not so bad. Then he'll go back to her and he'll do something really bad. And you go, no, he's still, he's still a bastard. Still obviously the guy that we need to defeat. Yep. He has his reasons, but doesn't mean his reasoning is right. Very true. Now, here's a question for our JRPG. Is there a magic system? I mean, you got to have a magic system. Yeah, I think, should it be cooking-based magic? That'd be unique. I can get behind that. So maybe there's a few different types. Maybe the cooking-based is kind of like the white magic. Yes. So you heal by eating a bunch. So what? what's the other magic? Like the, the black magic, you know, the offensive spells. I almost think like the home ec classes they make you take, you know, there was, oh, yeah. so there was cooking. So maybe they're kind of like, so there's a shop magic. There's a sewing magic. That would also be pretty adorable. The offensive magic. Maybe sewing something. So it's like a... An alchemy based. Uh, yeah, kind yeah. of an alchemy based. So it's not like necessarily stitching with thread and needle, but it's like you take two items and you use your magic stitching to stitch them together that creates an effect that hurts the aliens and bad guys and monsters. All right, I like that. So is our, is her friend the, the somber, gloomy one, is she a, a stitcher? I do like stitcher because it does take something that we do have a name for, like seamstress, and it makes it convoluted. So fits with the, uh, yeah. the idea here. I like it too. So she's a stitcher. There we go. Karis, the apprentice cookmeister, having a tragic day. Losing her parents to all sorts of aliens and yeah. meteors. But it's thrusting her into this adventure, which will send her on a journey to save the world. All right, well, I guess I'm up. I'm going to be drawing our protagonist, Karis's friend. She gets to go to the meteor with her, investigate, who we decided was a little somber and kind of gloomy, mm -hmm. yeah, but is a stitcher. Yep. So is she just going to fight with a giant magic needle? Of course. Okay. Now, what is her name? Let's just name her Cabbage. Karis's is kind of food related. Yeah. So shouldn't hers kind of be seamstress related? Because then her name's just Thimble. Maybe it is Thimble. Karis and Thimble. That works. She doesn't work with Karis. No, they're just friends. They're they're in the same town. Same small little village on the outskirts of, I'm sure, a bigger city, which will be our first probably main place to explore. I don't know. Do we want the, the story to start in uh, the diner with our main character, and then we kind of get the idea of her cooking-based combat? We have the, the diner, the, you know, the meteor site and everything. That's all kind of tutorial, you know, story exposition. Because you should start out at the diner, do the tutorial, and then you get a call from your your friend so you go into the sort of the outskirts of town with your friend who she's telling you you know you gotta help her out with something so maybe you get her in the party and she has to do something maybe get rid of some very sneaky vermin that are, are around her house so you now get the turn-based combat with her yeah and while you're at the outskirts of town the meteor comes destroys your family diner the first place you get to fully explore is the rubble of the town that you are from i still think that's a little bit of the tutorial yeah yeah like like I said, an exposition, but the first free place you have to kind of actually explore just wherever you want, that is the main city that's nearby. Okay. And I think 
You know what she just needs because it's a JRPG, of course. She's the she's the cat person. She's the cat person. Okay. <laughs> she's the type. She wants to be comfy. She's in a hoodie. <laughs> that is fair. Now it's a JRPG though, so does the hoodie have sleeves? Yes, the hoodie actually does have sleeves. Does it have two sleeves? Two sleeves. This this just is, does not seem RPG like to me don't, at all. Don't, don't worry, uh, you you'll see. Okay, I've, I've got a plan. All right. I'm eagerly awaiting your twist. Thimble, I think, is a little older than Karis, actually. I think that's a good assessment. So if Karis is like, what, we decided 14? 14, yeah. So Thimble is roughly 16 to 18, depending on which <laughs> version of the game you're playing. So if it's the Japanese <laughs> version, she's 16. If it's an American version, she's 18. Yeah, pretty much. Okay. Oh, yeah, yep. Yeah, definitely needs to have the patchwork. Uh... Yep, yeah, her clothes... Now you think they're just patchwork, like, oh, that's just, she didn't have any, you know, she made her clothes out of scraps, whatever. The fact of the matter is actually, she used her magic to make those pants, so they have a plus, like, five defense. Oh. Now, does she have actual hands or cat paws? Actual hands. Okay. The only cat thing about her is... Her bit, ears? A, her ears and a bit of her personality. Uh, I see. Does she also have a tail? She doesn't have a tail. She has cat tails. The yeah. coat tails. Coat tails, yeah. Her hoodie has coat tails. Now, I'm assuming that Karis upgrades her weapons by getting, like, more and more outlandish spatulas, or maybe just cookware in general. Yeah. So how would uh, Thimble upgrade her weaponry? So she goes from maybe a needle, does she just get a bigger needle? I think she gets, like, more elaborate needles as well. You'll see needles with weird, just things on them that you're just like, oh, I've never seen that on a needle. That actually doesn't make sense, because... Needle needs to be like slick and yeah. Uh, does she maybe uh, upgrade to like a crochet hook or like knitting needles or? I don't know. Maybe depending depending on uh, what you need her to do. Because I mean, this is a magic needle, so she's not actually like, yeah. using cloth. You know, she's stitching random things together. Yeah, yeah. Maybe she'll dual class, not only a stitcher, but maybe she can be general crafting. Yeah. Now I take it the first part of this story, uh, we are just sticking with our two main uh, characters. Oh yeah. I mean, you'll eventually, you know, we'll get a whole cast of weird misfits and I'm sure a womanizer at some point because it's a JRPG. Can't, can't we just have uh, this be the best friend and love interest and avoid all of that? I didn't say that the womanizer succeeded or that anyone was interested in him. <laughs> Just that he was there. Yeah, he does have to exist. Because these two, you know, Thimble and Karis, they're definitely, they don't care about him. I'd like to think that Karis is sort of just oblivious to everything. Oh, yeah. And Thimble is just like, oh, this dude. <laughs> Why is he in our party? I think Thimble feels that way about everyone but Karis. I think that's fair. It's like, what? We've got offense. We've got our healer. That's it. This is all that we need. We we do need someone who can punch things. That is true. Yeah, it just so happens the womanizer is a really good puncher. I think he should be the damage sponge because he gets slapped a bunch. So he's learned how Had to take to. a hit. Yeah. Yeah, he's their tank. You know, yeah, because he, he's always hitting on Karis, who's underage, mind you. And so yes. Thimble's not having any of that. So she's always beating him up. and Or, or stitching his uh, shoelaces together. <laughs> yeah, just anything really. She just does not like him. And understandably so. He's kind of a horrid person. Well, that can't be all of their party. No, no, I'm sure they'll have lots of people. She's yeah. just an apathetic teenager. Yep, who's looking out for her friend. Who is now an orphan. Mm-hmm. And she's known that this was going to happen because she's like, oh, my best friend has like blue hair. <sighs> this is my destiny. That's, that's why I think she became friends is, you know, she watched a lot of anime and we realized, oh no, that girl that lives down the street, she's going to have something tragic happen to her. I need to be there for her. Now, are her parents typical cat people? Like, uh, are they very... They're, they're not cat people. Find that she was adopted. Oh. Okay. You know, they found her, took her in. And that's why she feels like when she meets Kara, she's like, ah, oh, someone's got to take this girl in. Like, you know, my parents took me in. Yep. So what are they actually fighting? So we know aliens for sure. Yeah. But what kind of aliens? So the aliens, I think, are kind of shrouded in a mystery. They're like cloaked. You don't really ever see them. They are also like calling up monsters from the depth of the planet somehow. Ah, okay. So you do fight them a lot too. So are these are are these monsters sort of mashed up uh, versions of real creatures? 
I mean, some will definitely be, uh, but you'll find some that are completely unique and new. So there's an ultimate, there's got to be an ultimate, uh, very, very attractive looking uh, bad guy who... uh, You're not sure if they're male or female. Yes. And maybe that is our cyborg guy we were talking about. You've betrayed the planet (laughs) and now must pay the ultimate price. It's like, why are we doing this? You're 14, I'm 16, I'm sure there's somebody else that exists that is far more qualified to be doing this. You would think. Maybe Karis's parents, before they opened the diner, actually had saved the world ones. They were like the world's heroes. Ah, yes. And so Karis feels... She has to to live up to their yeah. legacy. So maybe, maybe the cool calculating guy wasn't just also like... You know, that's like they went into hiding, and when he scanned her, he realized... Oh, that's who your parents are? They got to go. (laughs) Ah, yes. So now she feels obligated, one, for revenge, two... To continue the legacy of... uh, Yeah, continue the legacy to save the planet. So, you know, anytime Thimble's like, you're 14, I'm 16, isn't there someone more qualified for this? She's just like, no. My parents (laughs) were this age when they did it. (laughs) I'm carrying their legacy. We're doing this. <laughs> Why couldn't I have been friends with somebody with normal colored hair? Because they're boring, and you don't like boring. That is very true. All right, yeah. So there's Thimble in all of her melancholy glory. So we have Karis, our protagonist, her melancholy friend, Thimble, both with unique magics. Based on cooking and stitching. Yeah. All right. And I think we definitely will be returning to this universe to flesh it out some more, maybe see some more characters. But for now, that'll be it. Don't forget to comment below. Do you have a suggestion for future episodes? Maybe some characters that uh, can join our protagonists in their journey. Thanks for watching Simply Drawful. I've been Tay. I'm Kay. Have a good week. Bye. Hey guys, thanks for watching. If you want to see more videos by us, click the thumbnails. It should take you to one of our latest video antics. And as always, be sure to like and subscribe to help us out. Or you can click here to support us over at Patreon to help us create even more quality content. Until next time, thanks again for watching.